So as you can see, there are four groups of devices in front of me. This is a PoE extender, this is a PoE powered switch, these are wireless network bridge, and this is fiber optic link. These four are all ways to extend our PoE transmissions over 100 meters. 100 meters is usually the limit for a normal transmission, so if you don't use anything or use any special techniques, a normal PoE can transmit for 100 meters and the signal will drop, the power will be losing, and it will kind of break down our experience. So now let's talk about them one by one. Well, first of all, right here is our PoE extender. This is an outdoor one input to output PoE extender. And with this, we can gain another 100 meters. Another 100 meters and also it can output two signals to two different IP devices. And all both of these ports can go all the way up to PO 30 watts of power. And this is an outdoor device. So when we expand outdoor, this is a real ideal device for us to use because it's waterproof helps the device to release heat and protects the device from water and dust penetration. And this one supports PoE Plus, so the remaining power is good enough for us to connect to most cameras. And most, of, most importantly, if we want to get more than 100 meters, we can daisy chain PoE extenders to simply add it up, but mostly we can get it up to 500 meters. That's the limit for a regular PoE extender. And what happens when we want an extension and more PoE ports, like the PoE extender, this is a really special version, but it only has two output ports. Well, right here, this is a PoE powered switch. This is a really, really unique device. What's so special about it? It acts both as power sourcing equipment and also power device. It can uh, put up to 70 watts of high power. It receives power and data from the main power source and data source and then it will receive it at port number eight. So port number eight right here is a very important port. It is like the main input port. And once it receives it, it takes a partial of the power and work operates itself. And then it will send the power and data to all other seven ports. And the other seven ports are just like regular PoE ports. So it's like a PoE switch, which can work on the outside field with no extra power supply. It's pretty cool. And this also gives us another 100 meters for all seven other ports. So it is a really convenient device because since we go outside, the 700, the F, uh, another seven, another seven ports have an extra 100 meters. And this extra 100 meters is usually a straight distance. And that is pretty far away. Now let's take a look at these devices. So the, this pair of device is called a wireless network bridge. This is a little bit unique as well because most of our transmissions, we are thinking as wired transmissions. Although this is using the long distance as a wireless transmission. This comes in a pair and one acts as the master device, the other acts as a slave device. The master device goes can connect with our main network and then it receives some data and out transmits a wireless signal. And this one here as the slave device will receive the signal and then transmit it to digital signals and use the Ethernet port transmit through Ethernet cables to our other IP devices. Usually we will see this often used in places where they need long distance transmission and the space between the, these two points, these two devices, are clear with almost zero obstacles. So there will be zero interference and with this we can achieve over a thousand meters, maybe up to two thousand meters, depending on which kind of model you get, and then would achieve a five hundred to nine hundred band megabits per second bandwidth. So it is really ideal when you're like sending, uh, connecting two points, one downhill, one uphill, that you can get a very clear space between these two devices. That's a good ideal situation for you to use a wireless network bridge, and also it is a little bit waterproof, so very okay to install outside or mostly it's a good place for a zero obstacle space. Now let's take a look at the last group. This one is fiber optic link. So fiber optic we might have heard about it a few times in our lives and they say fiber optic transmits the signals as like almost lasers, optical signals, but that's why they can transmit so fast and so far with almost very less decay. 
And since it is an optic signal and most of our IP networks are relying on digital signals, we're going to have to use a lot of special devices to capture the optic signal and release and transmit the optic signal. So these are called small form factor pluggables. These, you can imagine them as a device that can capture and shoot out the layers which contain this information we send or receive. And then this little box right here, this is a con media converter. This will convert the fiber optic signals into digital signals or the other way around. So this part, this little box and this little pluggable, this module, these are a very important group in the fiber optic link and mostly is seen on both sides of the fiber optic cable. And right here, this is a PLE switch with fiber optic in integrated. So as long as you see these two pluggable ports, it means there is a media converter inside. And all we need is another small form factor pluggable, plug it in. And on the other side, the same. And we can successfully fulfill this connection. So after this connection is complete, you can go up to 20 kilometers between these two, between the two switch devices for the fiber optic cable and it can reach gigabit bandwidth so it's really fast and long distance. All right, that's pretty much it for today. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to post them at the section below. And thank you guys for watching today and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.